I was born without arms and legs, but I taught myself to dance and to do makeup. Hi, I'm Brielle Adams Wheatley. I am 24 and I am a makeup artist on TikTok. I was adopted from Sao Paulo, Brazil, and before that was even possible, my story traveled all the way here to the United States, where my adopted mom heard about me in a grocery store, and she was pregnant with her 11th child, and the cashier was just making small talk with her, asking her what number she was on and everything, and then just carried on to say, well, I have a friend that's adopting a girl from Brazil, but there's also a boy that was born without arms or legs who needs a family. And my adopted mom was like, well, I take him in a second. And then she went home and she just couldn't get me off her mind. And then um, she told my adopted dad about me. And at first he was like, mm, not gonna happen. We already have 11 children. And she's like, no, I really think you should think about it because I really think we should. And so then um, he got his own inspiration and it was kind of like a vision of seeing me and the baby that my mom was pregnant with at the time um, growing up and being best friends. But at first, even the adoption agency was like, not a chance. You guys have way too many kids and way too low of a salary income to be able to handle the medical situations that are going to come with this little boy's life. And so then my adopted mom was like, no, we're going to adopt this little boy, you just watch. Six weeks later, they got a letter in the mail saying that they were actually perfect candidates to adopt me because of how many kids they had and the love and attention that I would receive from all of them. One of my favorite stories to tell is that my adopted mom knew that I was going to be independent and she was going to do anything and everything to make that possible. Even though she got a lot of backlash from it growing up, a lot of parents thought that she was being way too hard on me. There were times that I thought she was being way too hard, but now looking back at it now as an adult who is successful and independent, I have nothing but love and gratitude towards her for seeing the potential of what I could possibly have in my future, if not more. She sat all my siblings down um, at one point and just said, we're not going to do anything and everything for this little boy. He's going to need to learn how to do things on his own, even if that takes a day a week, a month, a year, whatever it's going to be. We're going to be here to be supportive, but we're not going to do things directly for him. One of the first things that I needed to learn was to go up and down the stairs because we lived in a split level home, which means there are stairs everywhere you go. And so I hated going up and down the stairs, but my mom um, would try and get super creative. And so we had a friend come over one day and she saw that we were both struggling and just getting frustrated with each other. And she's like, well, does he like marshmallows? And she's like, yeah, I think so. So she ran to the grocery store and put um, a marshmallow on each stair. So each stair I went up, I got a nice little reward. And then um, I needed to learn how to walk eventually. And so my brothers were skaters at the time and they had built their own little skate ramps in the backyard. And I would have to walk up and down those to gain balance, momentum and everything and be able to catch myself if I had fallen down. I never saw myself with a disability and I think it's just because of how persistent my mom was with making sure that I was independent. And so I'd actually get frustrated with having to be in a wheelchair when I'd go to school because at home I wasn't in a wheelchair. I was able to walk around and go up and down the stairs and everything and be active where in school I was just in a wheelchair and that kind of limited me in a lot of ways and it also put a blind on a lot of people at school making it think that I wasn't capable of doing a lot of things and so it wasn't until the seventh grade that I was able to um, open up and show in a talent show that I was able to get out of my wheelchair and do things on my own. And then after that, I started getting invited to parties and stuff like that and making friends. There was always some type of bullying going on. Um, I think it wasn't until I got into my later years of high school that I finally got comfortable and confident in who I was and kind of blocked out what the other people would say about me, um, whether that was within the classroom or on the playground or in between classes. I started dancing in the seventh grade 
Um, I never took professional classes or anything outside of school. When I got into my sophomore year, I was taking a dance course and a friend came up to me and said, you should audition for the dance company team for next year. And I was like, no way. And she's like, no, you really should. I'm going to do it as well. So we should audition together. I showed up to auditions and I was extremely late because I received a brand new wheelchair that day and they gave it to me halfway charged and I had already used up the charge going to school and everything. So I um, drove it home and charged it and it took way too long to charge. And so then I got to the auditions and they had already taught the choreography and everything. And so they called my name and said that I was at the front of the line and in the first row. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. And so I take my position and they say, key dancers, remember, point your toes and do full out extensions. And I was like, huh? Okay, I must be in the wrong room. And then um, they said, cue the music. And I just stood there and I just was looking around the room and I was like, she's definitely going to make the team. She's definitely going to make the team. She's really good. And then I just looked at myself in the mirror and I was like, you're just kidding yourself being here. And then the music ended and I just booked it out of there. And I went home and I told my mom, I was like, you know what, I'm not gonna finish auditions. And she's like, no, you're gonna finish what you started. And so then I went back the next day and I was in school um, going out to lunch and I heard two girls behind me say, they're only gonna put him on the team because he's handicapped. And I was like, are you kidding me? And so then I really got discouraged and I was like, I really don't want to be on this team. I don't want to be the school's little handout or pity party. And so then my mom was like, you know what, go talk to the dance coach and tell her that you don't want to be on the team because this and this and this. And so I told the dance coach and she said, you know what, I'm not going to put you on the team because of your disability or because of who you are or anything like that. I'm going to put you on the team because you'll work hard to keep it. Dance company actually helped me get into makeup just because we needed a little bit for performances and stuff. And so that kind of was my gateway and my excuse to get into makeup. And I grew up in a very religious background. So for a Mormon boy to be wearing makeup was a huge no-no. I also loved watching my mom and my sisters do their makeup and watching their routines and then watching YouTube videos too of other people doing their makeup. And then I started posting my makeup online, um, I think in 2019, 18. And when I first started, I was doing my makeup laying down and I think I still have that video on YouTube. But I would lay a towel on the ground and I put all my products on the ground. And then I had a mirror also leaned up against the wall so I could see what I was doing. But then I'd get done with my makeup and everything wasn't blended evenly. And my neck would hurt from being like up like that the entire time trying to look in the mirror. So I was like, that's not gonna work. And so then I had a bay window in my room that I would use to sit up at, and I would do my makeup pressed up against that. And then when I started dating my husband, um, he bought me an Ikea desk and chopped the legs down to my height so that I'd be able to do my makeup. And he bought me like a vanity light and some other makeup products and stuff like that. The hardest tool for me to use and adapt with would be mascara, just because I have to open the tube and then I have to flip the wand upside down and put it against the desk. And I don't ever really show this when I do my videos because I get um, mascara on my lips when I go to flip the wand around and my lips always turn out black and so in between shots I'll wipe off my lips and then go and show me applying the mascara. Dating was always a very interesting thing for me. I feel like I never found the perfect match or anything until I met my husband just because so many guys were always curious of what it would be like to be with someone without arms and legs. And so a lot of my dates in the past were just guys taking me on car rides to like a park and having small chat or them trying to touch me in inappropriate ways. And so I never um, had like a real true authentic date until my husband came around and um, he's like, I want to take you to a coffee shop and play games. And I was like, okay, sounds interesting. And so I was nervous going into it just because it was a public space. 
and um, I didn't want to be touching um, game pieces with my face or anything like that. And that it, this was maybe like two months right before COVID hit that I started dating my husband. And so um, he had thought of ways already for me to play games and stuff. And so when we got to the coffee shop, he asked the workers for a spare cup for me to shake the dice and like a spare bowl to hold my cards. And I was like, oh, okay, this guy's already got it all thought out for me. That's kind of cute. We got married in June of 2021. I feel like I've been coming out since I was probably in the fifth grade. Um, I remember the first time I told my parents that at the time I was gay and they're like, no, not a chance. This is not gonna happen. Growing up, I always knew that there was something different about me and it wasn't just the physical aspect of it. It was also just the feeling I had inside and then when I look at myself in the mirror, I just knew that I was looking at a completely different person than who I thought I was in my head and who I've always envisioned. And so um, I know that my parents tell me all the time that when I was really, really, really young, I would tell them all the time that I was a girl and they would be like, no, you're a boy. Like, no, like, I'm a girl. I'm like, no, you're a boy. And so that really played a big effect with, with the way that I looked at myself and the way that I felt, but also with growing up in a church that also did not believe in the LGBTQ community or let alone transitioning or anything like that. And I grew up um, thinking that my career path and everything was going to be completely different. So I always swallowed who I wanted to be and who I felt like I should always intend to be just to please everybody else around me but it wasn't until um New Year's Eve of this year that I was in Texas with my husband and um I just got really into my head and I just kept telling myself you're not happy with who you are you're not who you want to be and you're going to be 25 next year so are you going to continue living this life where you don't feel like you're yourself and you're just putting on a face? And then I ended up telling my husband that night that I had had these feelings and we had had conversations before, but I always told him that I wasn't going to do it or that I would just suppress it. And it's not because he was against it or anything. I just felt like it was a slap in the face to him and to other people because he married Gabe, not Brielle. And so I felt like doing that, I was not being faithful to him because I felt like I was putting a blind over him. And so then when I did tell him, he was 100% supportive. And he just said, okay, well, what do we need to do? What do you need from me? Do you want to start changing your pronouns? Do you want to start changing your name? Um, do you want me to start telling people? What can I do to help make you feel comfortable and confident? And so that really, really helped. And then I kind of just throughout this year I've been ripping off the band-aids left and right just because I feel like there's no better time and so when I came out publicly it kind of just was a random Saturday and I had a photo and a video um I think the artist was Jordy and he was remaking the song of this is the story of a girl or a boy but it played in perfectly for what I wanted to tell the world and so I came out with that video and then probably within like 10 minutes, a bunch of other news outlets, but I, I wasn't expecting it all, were picking it up and saying that makeup artist Gabe Adams that was TikTok makeup artist has now come out as transgender. And I was like, oh, there's no turning back. And honestly, ever since that moment, it's been so nice and so fresh to finally be myself and be free and not feel like I'm hiding or denying my true authentic self.